bitterly cold winter's morning, the children at Tokyo's Gaini Hikari Kindergarten come out to play. At this Spartan school, the uniform is no uniform. Those who are ill are allowed to wear shirts, the rest receive little sympathy. Even on days like today, when it's just a few degrees above zero. The idea is to toughen the youngsters up, physically and mentally. tough as this one, but the values it promotes are typical. Hard work, discipline, fierce competition. So, 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 so. Traditionally, Japan's education system has been a frantic race to the top. For decades, the system worked brilliantly churning out the corporate samurai who help Japanese industry outpace the world. Australia. Australia. Canberra. Canberra. But this much vaunted system is coming apart and more and more children are falling through the cracks. Yeah. <laughs> For many people, the mountains of Nagano are a peaceful retreat from the pressures of Tokyo but not for these students. They've given up their holidays to attend live-in cram school, studying from 8.30 in the morning to 10 at night. The pressure to perform is immense. school is a Japanese institution. There are more than 50,000 across the nation and it's estimated that 60% of students go to one, either during holidays or during term, on top of the usual classes. It's a response to what is known as examination hell, the seemingly never-ending cycle of tough tests that govern access to the best schools and universities. ですかね。息が詰まるって言うんですかね。朝起きて学校に行って帰ってきて、夕飯を食べるともうまた学習塾に行くって感じなんですよ。で、夜に難しいものなんだ。しばらく考える。で、最後にもうポイント言っちゃ
1,000 young people are committing suicide each year. In the last decade, the number of violent crimes committed by juveniles has doubled. Truancy has become endemic, as has a more dangerous and disturbing form of social withdrawal, hikikomori. It's estimated one million Japanese children are modern-day hermits, refusing to leave their rooms for years. ね。Shoko Sugiura is a youth counsellor. Today she's visiting two Hikikomori brothers. Four years ago, the boys suddenly turned violent, forcing their sister and parents to flee the family home. The boys live in it now. They rarely venture outside, and visitors are not welcome. Shoko's assistant tries to communicate through an upstairs window. After half an hour of cajoling, Koichi Yamamoto utters a few mumbled words. One of the family's old home videos shows Koichi as a happy, healthy boy. He was also a straight A student. Now, is unrecognizable. <laughs> the boy's father has taken off. Their mother and sister live in a tiny one room apartment. Masae Yamamoto blames herself. She says she pushed her children too hard and they started pushing back. The scale of the problem is unique to Japan, and Shoko has her hands full. She adopts a confrontational approach to getting the kids out of their rooms, but many Japanese parents do the opposite. Scared of the stigma attached to having a hikikomori child, they let the victims stay in their rooms, putting food under the door. が <laughs> Sadatsugu Kudo runs a hikikomori halfway house in Tokyo. All these boys are recovering recluses. Kudo-san blames a society dedicated to the economy. Children rarely see their workaholic fathers and are put under enormous pressure to perform and conform by their mothers. <laughs> That's what happened to 23-year-old Ryosuke Fukaya. He studied ferociously, 
Cram school until 11 at night, then homework, but still found himself sliding down the academic ladder. Frustrated and embarrassed, he hid from the world for six years. で、<laughs> Ryosuke and the other boys are being slowly reintroduced to society. Society is slowly being introduced to them. Hikikomori is a huge problem, but it received little attention until this. A 17 year old victim burst back into society in brutal fashion, hijacking a bus and stabbing a woman to death. In the last five years, more than 500 teenagers have killed or attempted to kill many of the crimes shocking in their savagery. The nation is still haunted by the Kobe case, when a 14-year-old chopped off another student's head and stuck it on the school gate. Revenge, he said, against the education system that had rendered him invisible. あの、残酷な犯罪を起こしている少年たちの共通しているのはみんな学力的な優秀な子供、しかも家庭環境も良いっていうのが the idea that good kids can suddenly turn bad has terrified Japan, prompting agonized soul searching and inspiring popular culture. This is one of Japan's most successful movies, Battle Royale. It's a bloody cross between Survivor and Lord of the Flies. School children are put on an island, only one is allowed off. The film reflects Japan's preoccupation with and fear of a young generation out of control. あの、日本 え、それ The government has responded by introducing the most radical reforms in half a century. The aim is to loosen things up, to relieve the pressure. Saturday classes have been abolished, curricula slashed by 30%. Rote learning is out, creative thinking in. Many parents are appalled. Japan's academic standards are extremely high. It's feared a generation is about to be dumbed down. Cram school enrolments are going through the roof, and more and more families are paying big money for even more intense forms of education. The Totsuka Yacht School near Nagoya takes a very different tack to the mainstream. Here, the belief is that modern kids are soft. More pain and pressure are required. 
bullying is encouraged. なわけよね。不快感というのはいけないんだと。子供に不快感を発生させることはいけないんだと。そうではなくて、不快感が発生する。その不快感が大きければ大きいほど、その不快感を克服した時の快感というのはイコールなんだと。不快感が小さければ、